Yeah, okay, today we're back in En Yaakov Masechet Brachot, in the first parak. Uh, if you guys see in the En Yaakov, it's um, the letter Lamed Zayin. Uh, if you don't have a book of En Yaakov, it's in the Perek Rishon of Masechet Brachot, Dav Zayin Amud Bet. And it starts as follows. ואמר רבי יוחנן משום רבי שמעון בן יוחאי גדולה שימושה של תורה יותר מלימודה Great is the service of תורה than the learning of it שנאמר and the source for this it is says in מלאכים in פרק in מלאכים ב' chapter ג' chapter 3 about the whole story over there with Yehoshaphat that was looking for Hanavi to consult with him as he says is there no prophet in this place that we may inquire in him therefore one of the servants says of the king of Israel one of the servants of the king of Israel spoke up and said Elisha son of Shafat Elish Vayomer Po Elisha ben Shafat Asher Yatsak Maim Al Yede Eliyahu Elisha son of Shafat is here who poured water over the hands of Elijah Eliyahu Elijah So we learn from this the sages want to learn from this in the Gemara that we see that Lamad lo ne'emar el ha-yatsak Melamed she'gdola she'imusha yoter me'limuda From the verse we see the fact that the verse does not mention that Elisha learned Torah from Eliyahu as we know Elisha was the servant of Eliyahu not as a servant of Ha'evet Chaz V'Shalom but he was the one that went with Eliyahu everywhere, and eventually Eliyahu gave him the prophecy over to Elisha. And Elisha, the Gemara says, and the Midrashim says, received everything, all of his prophecy from Eliyahu. Nevertheless, even though we know that to great Sadiqim, Eliyahu and Avi reveals himself to teach them Torah, great deep secrets of the Torah, the esoteric part of the Torah, and he reveals himself to only great tzaddikim. And we know that there are many stories that there were many tzaddikim, many great scholars, Torah scholars that would fast and and will do all kind of preparation in order to receive Gilui Eliyahu Navi. And all of this, it was in order to teach them Torah, as we know from also the story from the great Baal Shem Tov, that El- then his teacher, Achiyah Shiloni, which his teacher was Eliyahu Navi, taught all the Torah to the Baal Shem Tov, and all the deep secrets of the Torah was teaching to him through Achiyah Shiloni from Eliyahu Navi. So we see that there's a great thing and there's a great revelation of Eliyahu and Avi in teaching Torah itself. So we have to say that if Eliyahu and Avi has to reveal himself many generations before, thousands of years, uh, sorry, many generations after, thousands of years to Torah scholars, even more so at his time, to his disciple, Elisha Navi, for sure, Eliyahu Navi taught him Torah. But nevertheless, we find that the verse does not speak about Eliyahu Navi teaching Elisha any Torah at all. But rather, it says, when Yoshafat is looking for a a prophet to consult with him, he does not, the verse does not say that here is 
Elisha ben Shaphat that has taught or has learned Torah from Eliyahu. It says, Va'itzak, Yatzak ma'im alide Eliyahu. He poured water on the hands of Eliyahu. Very interesting. The Gemara learns from this that serving a Talmid Chacham, being that Eliyahu Navi was the Gadol Adol for sure, he was the Rebbe of the Dor. For sure he had something to say about Torah. I'm sure he had a lot of Chidushim also to write. But nevertheless, the greatness of Elisha was not from the fact that he learned Torah from Eliyahu. As we mentioned before, for sure Elisha learned Torah from Eliyahu. And great level of Torah that we can't even comprehend. Nevertheless, the 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 the, the the verse himself does not mention any learning Torah. Like the Gemara says, Lamad lo ne'emar, ela yatzak. The greatness of Elisha was that he served Atamid Chacham. He served Eliyahu Anavi. And from this, the sages in the Gemara learn, Melamed shegdola shimusha, that greater is the serving of Atamid Chacham Yoter mi limuda, gdola shimusha shel Torah. To be meshamesh, a talmid chacham that is great in Torah is even greater than learning Torah from him. And on one of the commentators, the Rif, Rabbi Yoshayahu Pinto, which was, which lived around 400 or 350 years ago, writes, a question, how do we know that G'dola Shimusha Shel Torah Yoter Mi Limuda? Why don't we say they're at least equal? So he simply, simple, simply answers the fact that the verse itself does not mention in any way learning Torah altogether we learn from that that <coughs> the shimusha is much greater than the limud because we don't find any kind of mention in the verse itself about learning altogether. If the verse would have says gdola asher po elisha ben shafat asher yatzak velamad asher yatzak mai velamad. Mi'eliyahu, then we would say, okay, at least learning the Torah from a Chacham, from the Rebbe, this is great. And it's as, just as great as serving him, doing Shimush Talmidei Chachamim. But since that the verse does not have any kind of mention, therefore Chachamim learn that it's much greater than actually learning or receiving any kind of Torah from the Talmud Chacham. The En Yaakov, I'm sorry, the Kotev, which is usually, if you guys see it on the top, is uh, a Kotev, is the one that's writing, literally translated, is usually, usually referred to Rabbi Yaakov Bar Shlomo Ibn Chaviv which is the great rabbi that compiled the En Yaakov. So he writes as follows. He writes a very interesting story from Rabbi Akiva. Concerning Amet Mitzvah. Amet Mitzvah is a a corpse, a dead body, Bar Minan, that was found in the middle of the street or on the side of the road or in a field, which nobody is there to bury him. This is called Amet Mitzvah. Amet Mitzvah usually oversees any kind of other Mitzvah. Like we say, as we know, Talmud Torah Keneged Kulam. 
the Talmud Torah oversees any kind of other mitzvah. As long as the mitzvah could be done through somebody else, a person is not allowed to be mevat el Talmud Torah. Nevertheless, there are some opinions that hold for a met mitzvah. If somebody finds a dead body, a corpse in the middle of the street or in the field, he is obligated to bury him and be and take care of this body. So we find the story with Rabbi Akiva that Rabbi Akiva was walking once in the middle of the field and he finds a met mitzvah. <clears throat> he finds a met mitzvah and he says that he did not move from there until he walked this corpse, this dead body, until the cemetery and then buried them. Buried them. Similarly, anybody would think that Rabbi Akiva did a great mitzvah. For sure that Rabbi Akiva took the time, Rabbi Akiva was a great scholar, and took the time, and took care of this, 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 this corpse, this body, in order to bring it to the cemetery, he did a great mitzvah. As he comes back to the Bet Midrash, and he tells his masters, Rabbi, Yeshua, Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua, what he has just done, which anybody would think that Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua would be very happy with their student that did such a great mitzvah of taking care of mitzvah tamet. Nevertheless, Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua surprisingly are not happy altogether. They're not happy. Why aren't they happy? They tell, and not only they're not happy, they're telling Rabbi Akiva on every step that you took until the cemetery, Shafakta Damim, you have poured blood of this, this body. It's as if you have killed him on every step. You have re-killed him on every step that you have taken. Why is that? Why is it that Rabbi Akiva committed such a great sin? How can it be? He did such a great mitzvah by taking this body into the cemetery. Comes the Gemara and says that, no, why is it that Rabbi Akiva was considered as if he had killed him. Because a met mitzvah, Allah says, that he has to be buried exactly where we found him. Exactly where the corpse was found, we dig a hole in the field, and we bury him then right there. And we don't take him to a cemetery, we don't take him anywhere else. That's the din of the met mitzvah. And therefore... By you taking him to the cemetery and prolonging prolonging his burial was a great sin. Because the Torah teaches us that the man mitzvah has to be buried right there. And therefore, Rabbi Akiva, you not only you didn't do a mitzvah, but you have caused great suffering to this body by not burying him at his right place. From then the Gemara says Rabbi Akiva decided from now on that he is not going to leave Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Yeshua a moment and to stay close by them and to learn the Shimush. Because as we know, a person could learn a lot of halachot. He could learn the Shulchan Aruch, he could learn the Gemara, he could learn all of the, a lot of Torah. But as long as he's not Mishamesh at Amir Chacham, to have experience in what he has to do and how he has to behave, that could not, own, that could not be learn from the Torah itself. We have to look at the great sages. We have to look at the great leaders of our generation. We have to look at the Rebbe of the generation, Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Yeshua, 
and to see how one must behave on every single step that he takes. One does not take things into his own hands and decide that this is what he's going to do by think, even though he's thinking that it's a great mitzvah. One does not do it on his own decisions, on his own thoughts, even though it could sound very logic, like the, like the case in Rabbi Akiva. He thought that he was doing a great mitzvah. He's taking this Jewish soul into a Jewish cemetery. But to, as we see from, from this story, that one is not supposed to make a decision without consulting his rabbi, without consulting the leaders of the generations. The En Yaakov, the Yun Yaakov, brings down that another story, that there was a big Talmud Chacham. We see from this story that we're about to say, the great merit that this Talmud Chacham had. This Talmud Chacham was a Talmud Chacham that took a wrong path and he left the derech, he left the path of Torah. He was a great scholar, but he had a big yetzerah, whatever the details of the story. So this, Tamid Chacham was about to be punished. And it's in Masechet Iruvin, and it says as follows, תלמיד אחד היה לו לרבי אליעזר, שנתחייב בשריפה. His punishment that he had to be, he had to be killed, he had to, be, he had to die. He had a gzerat din mavet, he was din of שריפה. But Chachamim says, הניחו לו, שאדם גדול שימש. Leave him alone. Because he had served, he would did a shimush of a great man, which was Rabbi Eliezer Agadol. So we see from here, even though a person, we see the great merit, the merit that this person had, was not the fact that only he learned Torah. That he had a Torah. Because why are they saying, why are they not screaming? One second. This, this great Torah scholar, he's a great Torah scholar. Don't, don't punish him. He's great. He learned so much Torah. No, that's not the voices that we hear. The Gemara says that, the sage says, Anichulo. Not Anichulo. Leave him alone. He has learned a lot of Torah. Anichulo. Anichulo that he has served a great master. He has served Rabbi Eliezer. Since he has served Rabbi Eliezer, one should not harm him. As again, we see the great merit he had just by serving a Talmud Chacham. By serving the Rebbe of that generation. By serving Rabbi Eliezer. So we see from this, that as long as that as a person, or tam, whether he's a tamid chacham, whether he's a tamid chacham, that chaz v'shalom went off the derech. A tamid chacham, that he has forgotten the ways of God. That he has forgotten the ways of his ancestors. That he's looking in other ways. But as long as he's connected, as long as he was connected to his Rebbe, as long as he was connected to Rabbi Eliezer. No harm should come to him. As we listen, that we learn from this, is that a person should always look up, wherever he is, look up to the great leaders, and connect to the Rebbe of the generation, and connect to him in such a way that even though he might find himself far from religion, far from, far from 
from practicing, being a practicing Jew. And even though he might think sometimes that he is getting a little bit off the derech, he is forgetting the ways of Hashem, Chaz Shalom sometimes. Nevertheless, he is always connected to his Rebbe. By the fact being to him, connecting once, he will always stay connected and no harm should come to him. So we're going to end off today with this and Bezat Hashem will continue next week.